Connor Prairie has transformed over the years to be a place for everyone. We are forging new partnerships and pathways that will allow us to meet the needs of the guests of tomorrow and care for the land we call home today. As we build on what we've become and chart our pathway forward, we know that we can reimagine how the world views and uses museums. We can create year-round and lifelong relationships that benefit our members, donors, and global audiences. Our Prairie Pathways campaign is providing the funding to make these visions a reality. With a 50-year history of storytelling, we have a foundation to build upon to create a broader, more inclusive pathway for learning. Where the whole story of this unique place can be told and guests of all backgrounds can see themselves in history. As a Smithsonian affiliate, we can forge a bolder pathway, providing access to some of the world's most unique artifacts at Connor Prairie. And as a museum accredited by the American Alliance of Museums, we have the ability and capacity to create deeper pathways of meaning and learning. Broader, deeper, bolder. These are the pathways we are creating with funding from our Prairie Pathways campaign. Broader, deeper, bolder. This is the vision for our community, and it needs you. Conroe Prairie is undergoing massive change. We don't have a choice but to evolve. We have to acknowledge that museums are no longer the places that hold the facts. The facts are everywhere, they're in our hands, right? Now we have to engage people in a new way. When they come here, we want it to be an experience. We don't want a museum to just be a place that you go to on your field trip to learn these things. One of the issues we have run into at Connor Prairie is we've outgrown our space. We have a lot of people who are hungry for these opportunities to engage with the land and to engage with our staff and to engage with the materials that we're providing. Today, when you come through our Welcome Center, you have your traditional spaces like our gift shop, you have a few exhibit spaces and a lot of staffing locations that are behind the scenes. We're getting ready to change all of that. We're getting ready to expand our Welcome Center, to truly move it into an experience center that can be used year round for all of our guests. We're gonna take a couple of exhibits and we're gonna expand all those experiences. We have a new exhibit coming to the Welcome Center. It's called Spark Lab. It was created with this desire to provide a space for children to develop an identity as an inventor. We may ask them, can you create something that rolls? Or can you create um, a way to protect this water that's in the White River? And then children have all these materials and tools to, to create actual solutions to real problems. We're going to make our collection become visible where you can actually step into part of it and see some of the amazing pieces that we're normally not able to pull out of our collection. We have 27,000 objects in the collection. 99% in here and 1% out there. The reason for that is because our collection is something we have to preserve and protect. And the building that we're in currently is not equipped to have the right temperature and humidity controls in the spaces, the, the right lighting, to be able to protect and preserve these objects in the way that we need to. As we move forward, we are working on some really wonderful things with the renovation of this building where we will, for the first time, be able to really do open storage and start to show some of these objects. We will have a massive glass wall. You will have different objects that we've selected from the collection. The Gashaw wagon, which is a very large piece that we have. We also have the dugout canoe, which basically dates back to around 1800 along with multiple other objects that are important to the stories that we're trying to tell here as an institution. For us to expand in this way, A, you've got the open storage collection space that we're talking about, but you've also got a changing exhibits gallery that's gonna go in, and that is going to allow us to really just blow the doors wide open on what we can show. With this new gallery space, we will be able to borrow collections items from other institutions. We are a Smithsonian affiliate, so there's a lot of really awesome opportunities there, 
uh, to be able to bring in different traveling exhibits from the Smithsonian, uh, to bring in different uh, items for exhibits that we might be working on, because we will have the ability to bring any of the objects that are in this space into that gallery, properly display them, safely display them in a way that the public can see them in person and really interact. Connor Prairie has made quite a few steps toward sharing inclusive stories. With over 20,000 objects, the one thing that's missing in Connor Prairie's collection is diversity. We do not have objects that truly speak to the experiences of African American Hoosiers, uh, Native Americans, and other communities of color that inhabit the space. As we diversify, we have a staff that is taking serious interest and care in sharing these stories through being able to understand the new objects that will become part of Connor Prairie's permanent collection. We will celebrate the opening of our newest exhibition, Promised Land of Proving Ground, which delivers the story of African American history, uh, something that Connor Prairie has uh, not done before. Visitors will have an experience that takes them through a thousand years of human history from pre-colonial Africa to the present day. Why are we covering so much ground? Well, it's simple. A lot of times in the United States, when young people learn about African American history, it begins with enslavement. And that is not the beginning of the African American story. And so we want to be able to educate visitors coming in about the African American and African influences Visitors will be able to interact with food waste programs, with music, uh, to understand the importance of spirituality with regards to African American culture and activism. Connor Prairie needs to move forward in a new direction to ensure that everyone that comes here feels welcome, but also learn about that history and how we interact and how we shape our community so that we can move forward. The land here at Connor Prairie is vast. One of the things that we've recognized is the need to understand the vastness of that land. What does it mean to have 1,046 acres? And what does it mean to be stewards of that land? Right now, I'm out on the precipice of our trail system, about a quarter mile trail. Our eventual expansion of this trail system to go from a quarter mile to a two and a half mile trail loop is really an opportunity for us to talk again about the native people that were here, the Delaware, the Lenape, a space where people can engage with the birds, the habitats, whether that's the upper story of the trees that surround me here today, or the lower story of the dirt and the roly polies that might be inside of there, or the birds or the deer that are out inside of the field. We have to consider people of all abilities as they get to use this trail system. And so creating a fully accessible trail here that allows people to come out and enjoy of all ages, whether it's from three to 83, we hope that this is gonna be a space that inspiration can flourish. Not many people will know this, but the White River runs directly through the middle of these 1,046 acres. Those 3.3 miles of the White River at Connor Prairie are some of the most underdeveloped areas that our guests get to see and that we've intentionally thought about. How can we use the river today? How is it used as a drinking source for Hamilton County residents, for Marion County residents? We wanna make sure that we are being good stewards of the land and the water on our site for the communities that use this as a resource downstream from us. We have an opportunity in the expansion of this trail system and the development of education hubs to really start teaching guests about the actions that they can take at home so that we make sure that this river is clean in the future, that we have a role here to think about local action with a global impact. We're thinking about all of our experiences and how we bring them to life and how we connect them together. And we have an opportunity to not only change our organization, but to truly change this region and to help shape it for future generations. Our guests who are coming in in the future, I would like for us to change the way they view and use our spaces. To realize that we are part of their community, they are part of our community, we are here to serve them.
being able to be a part of an organization that is savoring that move from the old to the new and dreaming about all that we can do for our community and also for ourselves. I'm excited to see Carnal Prairie take these huge steps toward a more inclusive story, a more inclusive experience for all visitors who engage not only in this space, but also uh, the technological future of Carnal Prairie and being able to share this information in a digital space. The Prairie Pathways campaign, this journey that we're on today, requires us to ask the community for support. We are a small but mighty staff that relies on the even stronger volunteer and community system that exists around us. This Prairie Pathways campaign, with its approach to innovation and expansion on the grounds, will set the stage for the next 30 years at Connor Prairie, that next legacy that'll exist for the families and the generations that are still yet to come. Mm -hmm.